Welcome everybody to the Synapse Philosophy Group. We are on principle number 12 in Stevenson's textbook, the senior text, page 252. And we're rocking through this and we're getting, I mean, this is, we're getting in some, some meat of a philosophy of chiropractic. And uh, we're on page 252. Alan's going to read for us and uh, let's go. Perfect. Article 328, the interference with transmission of universal force, principle number 12. There can be interference with the transmission of universal forces. The phenomena of universal forces are common, and its interference is too common to be discussed at great length. A tree makes shade when the sun shines. Lead plates interfere with x-rays. Brass stops magnetism. Rubber and glass interfere with the passage of electricity, etc., etc. Whether these forces be radiant or conducted, there is a way to interfere with them. If they're being conducted through material, a gap in the conductor will stop their flow. And a diminishing of the size of the conductor will diminish the amount which gets through. As swiftly as the energies travel in the radiant form and with apparent ease, they all prefer to pause, enter, and be conducted by matter. If this were not true, we could have no electricity for use, no compasses, no radio sets, no shade for comfort, and no, and no sunburns. Each of these strategies has a preference for certain kinds of matter. Having these well-established facts about natural phenomena, then it is not unreasonable to suppose innate forces might be radiant, but like other forms of energy, prefer a conductor and have a preference for the kind of conductor which is nerve tissue. And if this is true, is it not reasonable to suppose, though we cannot see this mental energy, that the impingement of this living conductor will interfere with the flow. It is true. It is no longer in the realm of theory. It has been proven time and again when adjustments have gotten sick people well. You know, that... That I, is I, some I, deep I, stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, interference, because what I, I'm thinking of, universal intelligence, God is 100% all the time. But the transmission, interference with the transmission of universal force, you know, there has to, that, that's where, to me, the, the, the limitation of matter comes in. Because matter is limited, limited in that transmission of energy, has to go through spirit into the transmission of material for an action or a thought so yeah there's a, there's a lot in there i love it i love that one i love it principle number 12 we don't spend enough time on it go ahead steve would you guys explain this that as swiftly as the energies travel in the radiant form <clears throat> and with apparent ease they all prefer to pause enter and be conducted by matter I'm thinking about radiant energy. How does that prefer matter to be conducted by matter? Like a lightning rod. That electricity finds that point. Oh, that's a and good example. Yeah. That's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. See, because that's a, you know, it's funny as I was reading this and he gave all those examples, but then he comes back and he starts talking about how. Sun, we wouldn't have sunburn if we didn't if the if yeah. if the energy didn't prefer the physical form yeah. then sunlight hits us and then and that's what causes and then it trans transforms when it hits us into into a heat energy and, and or something that causes a destructive force it can't be it's too much to be adapted in, in the time wow. frame Listen, you guys, what we're talking about is that the, the non-material intelligent, which I consider a loving force, wants and prefers to be with manifest, to manifest. How about that? 
That's its nature. That's heavy duty. Thank you for that. It's well, yeah, nature. that's a good point. And it, 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 that's potentially why all the various forms in the universe exist. Hey, this is being recorded, but I don't care. But it sounds woo-woo, and I love it, because <laughs> I think talking about is love. You know, and love likes to be expressed through matter. Exactly. You know, the transmission of love and just being in a loving room is received by the matter, the materia that is also animated by spirit. It's connecting the, the language of spirit from spirit to spirit is love. You know, we have to we have to remember that also that 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 when we talk about universal forces that they're unsolicitous that again that lightning that strikes can be destructive and yet the electricity in the lamp is providing light to be able to for us to work here and talk or to be transmit this information which goes from a force to being transmitted to the air and then back into a physical form so we can see each other here which yeah. is magic. <laughs> I mean, it, the, the amount of magic and just amazement of all those things, you know, that's what these guys are really telling us is like, be amazed. Yeah. Be amazed at this beautiful thing. Let me put it. I mean, these concepts of being able to put it into writing so we can read it of really what they were thinking and digesting it this way is just amazing. And they're telling us, be in amazement of all of it, in it, around it, amazing. Yeah, go ahead, I, Alan. I, I have, I just found um, a number of years ago when the ICA started the philosophy uh, uh, group that they had, um, they were gonna publish uh, 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 the PhD papers of a bunch of people and I and they published and sent out copies of Stevenson's PhD paper and I have a copy of that and I'll I'll try and make a copy and send it to you, to you Steve and if you want it uh, uh, to to you Hagen to you Steve if you want it I don't know if I have your email Steve but I um, yeah I want it but I don't think they ever sent any others out but I have that and it's 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 fascinating and so yeah, I'd like to have that top liver over here. And hey, you can have it too. No, we don't. We don't talk to cod liver. You guys that are running in the dark, I don't know. It's <laughs> so you know. I universal forces are always destructive. He's using this a little bit differently. I think they're not. Yeah. They're not necessarily destructive. They just don't care. I thought they're always destructive. They always cause. The they're breakdown. unsolicitous. That doesn't mean they're necessarily destructive. There's a difference. Unsolicitous <laughs> means they just they're just there. They're just a force that and and they not and they so the the wind that blew I through remember, New Orleans. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Was but destructive, I, but the wind also on the on can be the wind that blows on the ocean when it moves a sailboat isn't destructive at that time. It's I remember wind. earlier that it said and actually gravity sucks until it pulls you down and smacks your head on a rock. <laughs> Seventy six. If you turn the wind blows, when the wind blows, it could you know it blows the uh, uh, some of the seedlings off of some of the plants that you know fertilize, and when the ultraviolet rays you know hit hit certain plants, you know what's it called photo whatever, and it. You know, photosynthesis like, yeah photosynthesis and you know and then when you take the force of uh universal force of like a uh you know the niagara falls it creates energy yeah you know with the so it's you know it's uh it, it can be destructive but has no what is yeah it, solicitude for structures in which it goes on you know it's and it can yeah, be yeah. With, so you got a lot of solicitude to, tonight i like it I might have to look up to listen. You're exactly right. The light it hits a plant, yeah. which creates photosynthesis, and then it, and it can, and it grows and produces food that then we eat and use. If it wasn't for that light hitting the plant, we wouldn't have food to eat. 
And was it yeah, didn't BJ or somebody said I think it was BJ talked about the you know you innate is proved by heliotropism. You know when a plant moves towards the light. You, you know ever see a field of sunflowers. Oh, gorgeous, man! So and they cool. all face the sun. They turn during the course of the day. And you know, and that I, that is that is a proof of innate intelligence in. Yeah. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous. You know, it, they can be beneficial or harmful to the body. They may be applied either inside or outside of the body. They cannot be. Yeah, that that you're right. So. That that's in the freshman text. That, yeah, in the freshman text. Yeah. The plant. Let's go into number thirteen. Dave, Dave, you saying something? You're a little quiet. We, you saying something? We want to hear you. Yeah, I see your lips moving. <laughs> the, the, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me turn this off. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is that better now? Can you hear Perfect. me? Perfect. There you no. go. Yeah. So the plant is an example, the, the seed of the plant in the ground is an example of uh, uh, universal matter that once the sun hits it, it turns into innate intelligence and then it grows and then we cut it and it turns back into universal matter organized and then we eat it and then it turns back into innate intelligence within our body, right? You know, I, you know, I love that. I remember Pasquale, to, uh, you know, I heard him tell, ask, someone asked him, you know, don't you feel bad about eating that meat? And he said, I'm making that cow immortal. Right. He meant it. And that's uh, kind of what you're talking about, Dave. That yeah. full cycle of spirit. And, you know, it comes back into us, making us who we are, right? Right. That's right. An energetic shift. But I love that. We are making that cow immortal. That's right. That's right. Authority, you know. You know. So, little side note: two days ago was uh, would have been um, Sigafus's 88th birthday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Marilyn Shore and I and uh, Justin Brown in the back of the FCS convention, we had a, a moment of silence for him and yeah. uh, gave thanks for him. The wonderful teachings he gave us, man, it was beautiful. Yes, yeah, Stu, Stu, Stu Bittman spoke last night on her 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 uh, Zoom. You know yeah. that name. I know Stu very well. I gotta, yeah. I gotta watch that. I didn't have a chance to join in, but I'm yeah, he's pretty cool. Hey, Carrie Sigafus posted some note that he'd gotten from his grand, his father, years and years and years ago, and he said, you know, we didn't always get along, but you know, I always loved him unconditionally. It was a nice little note that that Sig had written to him, and he posted up on his Facebook page. It was very nice. Nice, great. Let's move on to principle thirteen. Okay, Doug. So well, here we go talking about what we were talking about a minute ago, right? That's right. Function of matter. <laughs> the function of matter is to express force. Nowhere in the universe can there be matter that does not receive the caretaking of universal intelligence. The great intelligence keeps it up to date every moment, and no bit of matter is without its share of vibration for the creative thinking of universal power is transformed into what we know as forms of energy. We are never aware of these forces until they are expressed by matter. We cannot perceive motion unless matter does it, and matter will not move unless a form of energy gets into it. The same may be said of other forms of energy, that we know in our study of physics, such as heat, light, and electricity, these forms are all interchangeable. Hence, life is but vibration and degree. The forms of which we have spoken are according to the unchangeable laws of physics, therefore unadaptable. It applies to inorganic matter. Though structures of matter may have many varied functions, all of them are primary to primarily to express force. It is impossible to conceive matter without force or force without matter, and we know that force originates in intelligence. Note, in bold, the term force is used in chiropractic as energy, as energy is in physics. Let me read that again, so I, I, I stumbled over it. The term force is used in chiropractic as energy is used in physics. 
You know, Woo! I think he needed that at the end. It is impossible to conceive matter without force or force without matter. And we know that force originates in, te- in intelligence. There's a lot, you know, I was thinking this one's going to be a little bit boring, but I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it goes back to my favorite rant about the Higgs boson particle, right? It's, and, it's, and when do you read the next article? I mean, should we read that one? The next? Well, yeah. Let, the next do we have something to say about this one first? Yeah, let's, you know, let's, let's discuss 413, then we'll go to 14. You yeah. know, nowhere in the universe can there be matter that does not receive the caretaking of universal intelligence. You know, there, that, that means God is all things that are and aren't really, right? The, did not, nothing, no matter, all matter is under the caretaking of universal intelligence. So this is as much as a discussion of matter as it is a discussion of universal intelligence, actually. Okay. So the great, the great intelligence, the great intelligence, all capitalized, keeps it up to date every moment, and no bit of material is without its share of vibration for the creative thinking of universal, universal capital U power, capital P, is transformed into that, into what we know uh, as forms of energy. So that's, you know, it's like a spiritual affirmation to me absolutely and that's why this is as much about universal intelligence and getting a grasp of that as it is about material because you need that universal understanding of the power to uh, creative forces of the universe to understand matter what we think is the most simple thing the carbon atom right go ahead you know the reason i became a chiropractor was because of the philosophy it was crea- it was making it was you it was explaining god in terms of science this is yeah. exciting yeah that's what, yeah. what that's what turned me on yeah absolutely yeah you people know? some people sometimes ask how how does matter have intelligence well you you know there's three forms of matter right it's a solid gas and liquid well, something solid, it's a property that it's solid. If it didn't have the intelligence, it would just fall to gas or fall to a liquid. So that's the universal intelligence within it. And, you know, when you break down whatever the, whatever the matter is into molecules, atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons, it, every single piece of matter has energy, yeah. intelligence. And I, I personally think, I won't go on record saying this, but I personally think that when you get down to the finite and you get into uh, the, the, the atom, or excuse me, the protons, neutrons, and electrons, I think that on a much, much smaller scale, that might be somebody else's universe. And then, it, and then how much, how much smaller can that get? A million times smaller? Of course it can. You know? That's, a, that's, that's something part that of a Chris, multiverse. That's what Chris Kent used to use in, one, in his talks years and years ago, the power of 10. Or actually, I think it was actually the guy Reekman might have used that the powers at 10. I don't remember who I saw it with first, where they he they go all the way down, 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 real small, and it, it turns and then all the way back out, and it's all this and winds up being the same on both ends. Right, um, right, right. The uh, you know, Dave Fletcher talks about how do you, how do you the, that uh, how can you know there's mental mental impulses are like the breeze that you can see because the leaves move, hmm. right? And that it's, uh, so that it's a manifestation, the, the, the energy is manifest through the physical thing. And, and as you were saying, Dave, that the integrity of the structure of water is the same when it's ice, the same when it's water, and the same when it's a gas vapor in a cloud. You know, it's all, and that's intelligence, maintaining that integrity through different forms of, of, the, of the same type of matter. And you can do that with all things that transpose between, you know, the volatilize is, I think, the term, but that transpose from different, st- through different states like that. You know, alcohol goes through a liquid state, goes through a state uh, very quickly to, 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 to gas. 
but others things take a much more energy to, to change to exchange it you know think about just the bonds to put together for hydrogen can go with anything and oxygen can go somewhere else to make water to make a rock to make your brain to make the body and uh, there's some intelligence in there how about this let's go on to principle 14 let's then we're almost halfway through the 33 principles all right sounds good oh, i got a bunch of marks on this one <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Article 330 in the senior text here, universal life in all matter, principle 14. Force is manifested by motion in matter. All matter has motion, therefore, there is universal life in all matter. This is a principle derived from and really belonging to number two. Life is necessarily the union of intelligence and matter. Intelligence is an entity. Matter is an entity. The character of matter when intelligence is present is what we call life. It is made known to us by matter expressing the force which intelligence creates. Quote, life is manifested by vibrations according to degree, unquote. Molecules have vibrations manifesting force. Nothing but intelligence could issue the force. Tissue cells have vibrations, a great degree of life manifesting force. Bodies of animate things have more movement from within, still more life. It requires intelligent creative forces to cause such movements. Therefore, an organism with signs of life has more intelligence united with it than the molecule. The vibrations of molecules and atoms are manifestations of universal life. Our ability to perceive is exactly proportional to our ability to recognize universal intelligence all about us. Wow. Yeah, every structure, pardon me, every structure is matter from a lump of clay to the tiger has intelligence in it, exactly proportional to its state of organization. The higher the grade of structure, the higher grade of intelligence present to make it and keep it that way. Degree in chiropractic terminology is taken to mean degree of perfection. Therefore, it involves quality as well as quantity. Well, our ability to perceive life is exactly proportional to our ability to recognize universal, universal intelligence all about us. I, I, I had to go back and read that. I have to yeah. say, once you, we got to that point, I was like, I lost you because I was like, I got to go back and read that again. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. That's a bit, Hold I have on. that really bolded out in my notes here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Every structure of matter from lump of clay to a tiger has intelligence in it exactly proportional to its state of organization. The helium atom has organization to it. It's only one unit yeah but it, it it still has intelligence yeah but we have a much higher complexity of organization and therefore require more intelligence and have more expression of that intelligence i think exactly what you're saying is when we convey that to our practice members we should let them know hey listen this isn't chiropractic this is what it is. You know, the, the, what chiropractic is is something different. This is talking about there's life, there's universal life in every single piece of matter. And within a living thing, there's an inborn innate intelligence. And then say the chiropractor's job is to align the vertebra so the innate intelligence expresses into the body without interference. But people need to know, hey, listen, what we're talking about here, this isn't chiropractic. You know, this is, this is, this is facts. This is this is what it is, you it's know, explaining universal laws, you right? Because right. you know, we're, we're it's, as chiropractors, we're trained to be able to see this. A lot of people don't see that, though, you know. Right. Yeah, and to to take the 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 bit about intelligence in each thing to a different level, as we get you know, where you go, where does life come from, and where does that you know they haven't been able to figure that out. They haven't been able to ever manifest it, but somehow. The chemistry 
happened in, in that organisms that, that that different molecules came together and started to join together and finally formed a single cell at some point. And the cells, and over time, those cells started to find that if they worked together, they'd be more organized and could survive better. And then they started to differentiate, to have different components of uh, to do different jobs within a, a bigger unit of cells, yeah. you know, of organisms. And so you get to, you know, amoeba, and you get to, and you come up the line. And in reality, our bodies are groups of cells that are con that are organized. We have a heart that's a group of cells, and we have lungs that are a group of cells, and we have muscles that are groups of cells, and they all have different jobs, but they're all organized and working together to a, to, to a large degree. And that's really what evolution was, as, as each group, as, we got, as it got higher and higher, and there were bigger groups and more work to be done in an organized fashion, that, that's where it all came from. And we, at this point, as far as we know in this world, are... At a, at a higher level than than other things we don't know that if someplace else there might be something else that's more highly organized than we are at this point but yeah. as far as we know it we seem to be the highest organized here that we unless we're being dumb about the way the whales and the and the elephants are well don't they say that the the dna strands or whatever are in plants are longer than they are in humans which they, they expected to be more highly evolved to have the longer the chain and plants have much longer chains than, than, than living beings on earth, other, other living beings. You know, uh, whoa, there was a lot <laughs> of digest out of that. There's, that's a, whoa, we've just read some, you know, intense chiropractic or philosophy, human philosophy of consciousness. So, uh, you know, like my, like David's talking about, you know, how do we take this to our people is one thing that we know that we know, and we have that confidence. What it is, just like Dr. Sid talked about, is that the authority to know that I, we, we are part of the big connection. Being well adjusted helps us maintain our space in that giant connection. You know, that's why the first thing that just came to my mind. Think about this. So my vibration is in harmony with the other vibrations around me. That's what I truly want. All my ch my kids' friends to be adjusted, you know, and all of us and my whole town to be in harmony and well adjusted. I think that's one of my whys to be a chiropractor, because I want to live in that utopian world where everyone's well adjusted. My my mission statement in my office is, you know. Uh, is to bring heaven on earth, at, uh, it, to create a heavenly earth, which is on earth as it is in heaven. You know, everyone well adjusted. I could imagine just living in a utopia. Everyone's blissful. Bliss. Yes. What we got done reading is about going from simple to more complex. In the beginning, supposedly according to science, there was maybe just one chemical in the periodic table, the chemistry periodic table. And then through time, it became more complicated. Then we had minerals, then we had more complicated. And this is all on a progression towards greater perfection, according to what we just read, because it says in the bottom degree in chiropractic terminology is taken to mean degree of perfection. The higher the grade of structure, the higher the grade of intelligence present. So what's happening in evolution is it's marching towards greater perfection. And that's what that's if we just don't interfere with it and allow it to happen, we're good, we're becoming, I mean, perfection's not a static thing. You don't just reach it. It always is growing more. There's always more. That's why I believe, and some people think it's impossible, but I think even God is growing. Somebody said, no way in the audience when I was at a cell. No, God knows everything. He can't know more. Well, God is infinite. Therefore, he also is has the ability to learn. You can't, you can't keep growth away from God and learning away from God. So there is this progression towards perfection, more and more, more and more, more and more.
what the first thing that came to mind is like the Mendelbrot set, you know, or where we're looking at um, fractal geometry, things going out into the infinite. But then there, you know, what Pasquale said to me one time, he said, God is a hologram. You could take one piece out of there, he's still the whole thing in the hologram. And what you're just saying, Steve, just made me think about really is that, you know, things going on for that, you know, you know what, what I'm talking about with fractal geometry or, you know, like the Mendelbrot set, things going on into infinite. And, uh, you know, that's where the perfection is. It gets more beautiful, the more finite it becomes. I had fun with this one tonight, you guys. On a, on a, on a side note, uh, please be conscious, gentlemen, of the fact that if you call God he, you immediately limit. Oh, because... did I say that? Did I say he? I'm sure I have. I have. I'm yeah. sure. That's just no, something to think about. Oh, yeah. That that's a limit. That puts that. That's a limitation. It's not a hole at that yeah. point. It's an e it's an easy concept. No, absolutely, it's, it, you're you're and taught you're that as a child. You're, you're taught that as a child, correct. and yeah. we've we have we understand the concept of a universal intelligence and a god to be bigger than that. So See, I'm, I'm going to work on that because I think that's that's an important, you yeah. know, uh, refinement, and I appreciate it very much. Absolutely, thank you. I want to make sure Monty knows we know he's here, and if he wants to say something, we're, we'd love to hear what he has to say. Yeah, <laughs> Monty, this is this is an open forum. We, we're chatting about philosophy. Jump in anytime you want, but I also want to give you a minute. Thank you, Alan, for doing that. Well, thank you so much, guys. Just just to be here is just a blessing, and I'm just ultimately just tapping into to all this knowledge. So, so thank where, you so much. Where are you? Where Where are you in the world? Center City, New Jersey. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Yes. Right on. Well, we 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 love hearing all points of view and we we hope we're stimulating you to make some thoughts and please join in with us. And you know, we have we have no rights to be pontificating on our own. We have we just we're just mouthing off. <laughs> well, you know, and join the page, the Synapse Philosophy page on Facebook. And I put this on YouTube and I put these also the audio on Spotify. Okay. So uh you can get all these. We've been doing it for, you know, we have a couple of hundred episodes, you know. Awesome, guys. I think we did a lot tonight. I think we should stop there. I mean, 13, what do we do? 12, 13, 14. And there was Correct. a lot. I tell you, those a lot of deep stuff in those three, days. too. Huh? A lot of deep stuff. A lot of deep stuff. And I skip over those. I've been reading 33 principles. I used to have them posted on my walls. Those are the ones I skip the most. And uh, I got a lot out of reading them and I appreciate it very much, man. Yeah, you know, and the, the thing that is is disturbing, <clears throat> and I think for all of us, is that that most that and most of the school students are not being exposed to this in a, in a, in, a vi in a viable way. It's not like when I was at Sherman and at Life and you know, we would sit and talk about does innate talk to innate you know can we you know how do you yeah. know that, how can you tell that somebody how, how do you how is it that sometimes you're sitting in your house and you go and somebody's coming to the door before they knock on the door or how do you know the phone's gonna ring you know before the phone rings how does that happen yeah. you know it's and it, is that innate talking to innate i mean we used to have those conversations in the cafeteria at school and i i don't think that's happening to most of schools now and and and, and it's not I don't it go to does. school. Is that a fact? I see, it. I see it a little bit. They're working on it. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are listening to this. I mean, this is, you know, all these things we're making history right now. I mean, on Spotify, in 10 years, we can have some students listening to these 33 principles and getting it. We could be changing the world. It might not be today. And we get hits. We get about 100 or something new video people watching the YouTube channel. You know, wow. it's uh, from around the world. I wow. really see, you know, what we're doing right now, I think is important for the for marking this time in history for chiropractic. OK, whether we go through this again in 10 years and we're seeing it with new eyes and hearing it with new ears and discussing all these things again, we're going to be amazed with the things we come up with because it's fi infinite. It's not finite. Right. It's like the Bible. You read it once. Eh, it was a good book. 
no, every time you read it, whoa, you know? Yeah. So I, I appreciate I, I surely hope that I'm here to do it again in 10 years with you, Hank. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll take a break in a while, one day, but you know, this is the thing, you know, I appreciate you, the 1% of the 1%. I mean, realize we've had, we've, and we've had a lot of people coming and going on here and I claim them too, but to come and sit and talk about chiropractic philosophy, not a lot of people are doing it right now. And you know what? This just blew me away. Big time, big time. And it always surprised me the things we come up with as we discuss these. It, it, it's so valuable. It's so good. When think about all the, all the, all the, the ladies and, and men that came before us, they used to call it breaking it down. They met a lot more and did this. It used yeah. to be Sigafus, um, uh, Reggie Gold, Arno Bernier, Pasquale, all those guys used to meet in Pennsylvania and New York and talk about philosophy all night. Okay. Could you imagine me with those guys? Those are the ones that were doing it back then. Well, we just read tonight that everywhere there is this caringness going on. It's everywhere in matter. That's right. Peggy, who is the who is one of the number one female philosophers of all time? Uh, Mabel. Mabel. Modern Palmer. day time. Modern day time. Modern day time. Uh you Thank tell me you. who are you thinking of? Sue Brown. Sue Brown. Sue absolutely. Brown. Absolutely. God bless her. You know, we have BGI yeah. two at my office um, in a couple of weeks. I think in like two weeks, BGI two is at my office. It's going to be intense. Yeah. Intense. This is our fourth one we've had there. And uh, the students that are coming now, I'm telling you, are samurais. Oh, yeah. Are you know, they're driving, this is like, some of them, this is like the fourth time they're coming to my office from Atlanta. We've got kids flying in from Life West. I mean, the world, the, I could see them. They are blossoming. Steve, Allen, they are blossoming in philosophy. They're the few, okay? Dave knows that too. But those few light some sparks and fires, man. They really do. They do. I'm excited for our future. I am. All right? Hey, I'm excited Thanks, for you guys, and I appreciate you. All right, let's sign off. I, 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 you know, I, I get renewed and ju rejuvenated. Love you, brother. You too, Monty. Hope you can join okay. us again, man. And uh, you know, invite your friends. Everyone's welcome to share. Okay. Even Love people from.